Good morning, Salem family. I hope you're having a great day. Happy Tuesday. I'm Laura Frank, and today our devotion comes from Lutheran Hour Ministries, and our Bible verse is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20. It says, But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Today, our devotion focuses on my fifth grade students' two favorite words. Well, I guess two of their favorite words besides like no homework and extra recess. <laughs> but today, our devotion is focusing on the words, what if? We love <laughs> to ask what if questions, don't we? What if? President Kennedy hadn't been assassinated? What if Adolf Hitler had won World War II? What if I had married that guy or girl instead? What if I had taken that job instead of this one? What if I left five seconds earlier and didn't get caught in that traffic jam? What if? My fifth graders love to ask things like, what if there's a snowstorm and we can't get to school? What if aliens come and attack our school bus and we can't get to our field trip? You know, very relevant and important things like that. But most of those times, those what if questions are innocent enough. They lead us to some interesting, different alternate universes where we are more successful, more good looking, more well rested, and aliens have taken over our field trip, which makes it infinitely more fun. But sometimes those what if questions can lead to some real soul searching. For instance, what if God had almost revealed himself in Jesus Christ? Or what if Christ had almost been born or almost been nailed to the cross? What if Jesus would have said, ask and it might be given to you, seek and you'll probably find, knock and the door most likely will be opened unto you. What if the Savior would have said, come to me all who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest, kinda. How would your life have been changed if Jesus has told his disciples, I'm a possible way, a sort of truth, and a very dim light? Those what if questions would change our lives. Surprisingly, we are not alone in our what if question asking. Paul does the same thing. He asks, what if Christ had not been raised from the dead? Wow. That really changes things. Paul, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, answers that question. He says, if Jesus isn't alive, neither are those believers who have died. What if Christ is not raised from the dead? Then every sermon of comfort is a lie. If Christ is not risen, there is no hope. There is no tomorrow. And the day of death is the blackest day of all. Yep, that's what can happen if Christ doesn't return. But, and this is a very important but to note, Paul doesn't stop there. He continues on. But now Christ is risen from the dead, the first fruits of those who are sleeping. Notice Paul doesn't say Jesus probably, sort of, maybe, kind of. No. Paul says, now is Christ risen from the dead. It's a fact, an undeniable fact, a real fact. Let the world laugh and make a mockery. The fact remains. The tomb was empty on Easter. Jesus is leading the parade of those who have been rescued from the grave's clutches. The disciples saw a risen Lord. The disciples ate with a risen Lord. The disciples touched a risen Lord. The disciples learned from a risen Lord. 
day after day they visited with him. And because they did, we can be sure our eternity doesn't rest on an unanswered what if. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I give thanks for your grace, for your Son, and for your facts, which say that with faith I have been rescued and redeemed. May I always share that good news with others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Salem family, I hope you have a fantastic day, and I hope this devotion has been good for your soul. I'll see you soon. Bye!